here is cleaning bone from jar 19. Many of the sediments in the jars have stuck the bone together and so we must prepare them before Sean can do the skeletal analysis on them. We find bones, fragments of teeth, but we all have also found many beads and the largest number of rings and other ornaments such as earrings. This is a very rich site in artifacts. It has a large number of bodies and we need to do at least two field seasons to get all of the information out of the site. But Phnom Kanong Phang is a very important site. This burial from Jar 11, it's probably a male. Um, and you can see it's got a very, very well preserved skull. Um, I'm taking very close-up photos to look at the pathology. There's evidence of um, cribra orbitalia, fine pitting in the orbits, and also parotic hyperostosis, the same thing, but on the 
on the calvarium on the top of the skull. Um, there's also evidence of um, general um, infection, probably a dental infection, um, that may have um, may have become a um, sinus infection as well. And there's also evidence for um, a broken nose on this individual. So lots of lots of um, pathology. Yes, do you want me to say? Important. And what we have found in the past week proves this argument. This is one of the best sites because, number one, it has the most burials. It is almost as if a very large population saw this as almost the main place that they would bury their dead. There are also coffins here four different kind of coffin styles, two of which I have not seen before. One is a little coffin shaped with a round bottom. Another is coffins that the lid is held by pegs. It ha you can see the square holes. Mm. This is the first time we see this. Number two, we have found two of these coffins hidden away in the back of the cave. Wow. And so maybe this is something special. Um, there were many very simple uh, earrings and, and rings, but many, many. Um, this also may be indication that this is a special site for special people. Uh, we found beads, small beads, but also very large beads. Very nice beads compared to Okai, Pelompel, and other places. So this site is really as special as we thought it would be. Hmm. What we do right now is we want to know how long ago these people live. And what Sean is doing is taking one tooth, Very gently pulling it out. One tooth, and then we will also take a little piece of bone. We will use scientific analysis to find out how many hundred years ago they lived, and also from the tooth, we can find out something about what they ate. As Sean said, 
many of these people did not have good health. They have weaknesses in their bones, and you can see this in the skulls. And so it would be very interesting to find out what they were eating in this area, because the forest is very rich in food. As Sean said, if they cannot absorb the goodness of the food, it may be because they had worms or some parasite that would make them a bit sick. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I think still a uh, question like uh, of the car, of this the car, is still a question also. You're thinking that maybe bone come from not far from this area. And you're thinking that maybe come out. And some question, I'm just question to Jim K. Mm -hmm. He did know before us and he know from the Krishna collection all the thing. And we sent the team down was in 2001, 2002. Mm -hmm. And I hope that maybe the next step we planning to go to the Angri top of here. Maybe 12, 12 kilometers, mm -hmm. but up and down in the area. But I don't know. We, this this happened and what before happened because you support the financial that thing. Mm -hmm. And our last question is how we are for the future. We can we have book in English, book in Khmer for that story for the future. If we can have that one, maybe good, but take time and how who will be supporting? We know that Cambodian government, we tell the truth, don't have much money to support mm -hmm. it. Like Oksukar, uh, he come here, mm -hmm. just survive by, and like us also, the team protection, mm -hmm. get just side uh, survive by the donor mm -hmm. money. And how are we thinking about next year? Next year, that means 2012 or 2003, mm -hmm. well. that important part. I, I will tell you, number one, about going to the other sites and finding the other sites. This is very important. I also agree. These people, I think, came from in the Cardamom Mountains. We know site as far as Okai, uh, and uh, there is another site in Tarpiang Ruang. But there is also a site up in Prasat, in Kanom, 72 kilometers apart. I think the people may have had some uh, relationship, maybe not family, but the same kind of belief. They use the exact same kind of way to bury their dead in the same jars. So the more sites we find, the better we will understand exactly where these people could have lived. This is very important to go out and find as many sites as possible to at least get the GPS positions. Why are the GPS positions important? Because, number one, we can then look at where the sites are on the map. When we go to find the money to support the research, we can show how many of the sites there are, the kind of pattern they make on the map. This interests fund people who give the funding. Number two, it is important to talk about these sites because everyone talks about Angkor as if it were the only part of Cambodian history. However, Cambodian history was also the people who lived in the forest, who lived in the mountains. They lived at the same time as the great Angkor Kingdom. And their history, their story, also needs to be told in the history of Cambodia. Good. I think that the next repair, I hope that uh, the same and the repeat about it. Report about book. Because a uh, lot about book in, in Angkor Wat, right? Ja. But we don't have book about Ja in mm. Karamo Mountain. 
and a lot I think that a lot of people they use relay conking and relay conking about eight minutes by helicopter from that time. Maybe some burn from that because in that one you see that old temple. Yeah. Maybe in that time a lot of people live in that area. And here we call Kamlaut. Mm. Kamlaut not far from here, about six or eight kilometers. Mm. And Kamlaut that has old temple also. Yeah. Maybe some people from here. But uh, he's thinking that some worry say, oh, maybe a lot of writing in English worry about no in Khmer. But I'm thinking no. now, now in Cambodian have people that have smart, they can translate to in this, Khmer also. I mm. have also uh, thought we will take all of the information, not just the archaeology, but also the ecology, the natural history of the area to make a book. It must be in Khmer and English. It must be. Number one, because the Khmer uh, story can then be read by many, many Khmer people. And there are not very many good books on the archaeology in Khmer. Why? Why? <laughs> it's easy enough to translate. Yeah, yeah that um, can help. That, that, that's good news for the special ministry of, of art. Ah, well, all of my reports are in uh, Khmer. Good. บ่าบ่าบ่องใหญ่ใหญ่ทอดมาบ่าบ่องใหญ่ใหญ่ทอดมันเอาเป็นจัดซับมีลางกรีลือลางกรีกราวใส่ปนังนอนตอดสโนบ
Cắn lưu của một biển mình tìm mừng cắn lưu cái và cropping à chị bói đặt ទៅនៅឡាញ់ពេញបារាំងជិតសັບនេះគឺយើងបានទុកមកកន្លែងភាគនឹងរើសយកមកបិទកុំវាវិញទៅតាមលក្ខណៈដើមដែលមិនសោ
thà phụ dương bàn mà sầm ạt ai ru ri sạt đời kỳ tự mò bọ sầm ạt nó tin đi hay đẹp chậm ở sạt làng vinh ni chấp này mùi này cả áp lệ nó tha được xả chẳng đồn ta tại ở cô ta đi đi nó về đẹp phụ dương đồn ta đảm cô ta đi đi thà phụ dương bán cho mặt vợ cả bỏ sầm à chút sầm à tiền hay bật công tiền nâng ao mình lẽ cái nạn đôi lọ đôi đào về Okay, look cool.
lấy dựng đã chạm từ bên từ lọt từ bên để chạm lên bàn thật ăn rồi dạng làm ăn làm ăn sạch hay hay đồn ta của sự bài chết là con trai ở bàn nào làm ăn chạm từ ăn đi hay chú làm ăn tiền hay con trai từ lọt từ bên bàn sạch bài người ta xin miệng bàn thấy con trai mình lôi xong lôi dùng đấu xin làm cái đó mà ai phở cà xoay chứ đều mà đó tiệt This is Phnom Phnom Khan the largest of the jar sites that we've so far surveyed in the Cardamom Mountains It was particularly important to come and survey this site first of all for the number of jars that we have um, there are over 40 entire jars, and Tep Soka has conserved perhaps another seven or so. Many are still in pieces. As a matter of fact, it is such a large site that we now know we have to break up the work here into two seasons. The second season will start in 2013. What we have found in this site is also particularly important. First of all, there are at least five coffins, some still intact. There is a different type of coffin construction here, including a one meter long pod-shaped coffin and coffins that have their lids held on with two pegs. The variety of coffins suggest that while people were making the same burial practice, they had slightly different methods of their coffin construction. We've also found the greatest number of this very simple rings, metal rings, that we find in all of these body jar sites. Here we have found now at least 35 to 40 rings and pieces. One jar alone held 15 rings. For the first time we've also found earrings and other small ornaments. Again, we have found the simple beads that we find in other body jar sites. But this time the beads are more elaborate. Most of the beads are blue, which is very interesting. Overall, this site may represent a central place, an important place where the practice either began and then radiated out from to the other sites within the mountains, or it may have been the most important of the jar sites in the Cardamom Mountains. The local forest people that we work with tell us that there are a number of sites within several kilometers of here. As a matter of fact, there is one site with five jars on a ledge, only about a 10 minute walk from this site. The jar sites in the Cardamom Mountains are very special. The work that we do is important for capturing and then telling the cultural history of the people who lived in these hills during Angkorian times but were not necessarily associated with the kingdom of Angkor. Their story is just as exciting. <laughs>